I just want to say a quick thank you um, to everyone who has respectfully uh, reprimanded me and uh, offered brilliant opinions on the Angel Reese conversation. So Emmanuel Atro has been getting his behind dragged on the timeline for good reason. You saying that you don't have any generational trauma in some way meaning or that in some way meaning that your delivery method to white people is going to be either more effective or more sanitized is to me dangerous. And let me tell you why. Everybody that you just named and what you're talking about does what they do in different ways. I don't think that any of the things that they do are necessarily harmful. But what I could say is a black man, a prominent one, acting as an emotional butler for white people and serving them the most milk toast, unspicy, unseasoned brand of racial discourse and accountability possible could definitely be harmful. Remember this interview on Higher Learning? where my King Van Lathan took a blowtorch to Acho's career? Good, good discernment. Um, I understand. I understand. I understand. I think life is all about understanding. Well, after he doused gasoline on Angel Reese and lit the match, Lathan's co-host, Rachel Lindsay, had some choice words. We were talking about whether or not you can separate Emmanuel Acho as a person from this comment. Um... At this point, I don't think that you can. Emmanuel Acho is a repeat offender to the point where whenever he seems to be given the opportunity to speak on behalf of, I'll just say black women, he does so in this manner. Now, it's really disappointing to me as a somebody who's known him because a lot of Emmanuel's notoriety outside of the sports world is because of uncomfortable conversations with a black man. And I think I've said it on this podcast before that when that idea came about, it was something he talked to me about and originally he wanted to do it together. I didn't do it. He did it on his own. And I say this because I was there when he was brainstorming it and I was there and I heard his intention behind it. More from Rachel in a moment. She segues to this series with Acho, who saw the summer protests of 2020 and thought, you know what would be a great angle? Both sides in every issue. For example, we know the institutional racism that occurs within American policing. We are a well-educated society on the topic. Acho decided to host and show sympathy to those very institutions through his platform. He has worked and promoted a book series with pro-genocider Noah Tishby. When given the opportunity to interview Roger Goodell and Colin Kaepernick, he cozied up to the commissioner and offered zero backlash. Never was Goodell uncomfortable. Rather, it was solely based on Acho furthering his career through comforting the elite. Back to Rachel. As uncomfortable conversations with the black man has taken off and given him this attention in a way that I don't think he, I know he didn't expect when he started it and had and an opportunity for him to monetize it in a way that I know he didn't expect for this to happen. There seems to have been this huge shift in my opinion in how he talks about black people. And as I said, black women, and I don't know if he is trying to pander to a specific audience or if he's doing this because he wants to seek attention, however he can get it, or if it's some kind of mixture at both. But at this point, this is who Emmanuel Acho is. Rachel would add she was part of the dialogue when the idea for uncomfortable conversations was contrived, but she did not latch on to the show. Furthermore, he defends his comments also by saying that he's this analyst and that it's his job to give an analysis, but his analysis is ineffective because as multiple people have already pointed out, you can't talk about black women and have a gender neutral and racially indifferent take. You don't get to preface your analysis by stating that we're the historically the most black women or historically the most disrespected people in this country or marginalized people in this country and then proceed to disrespect black women in your take. It's like you're proving the original point. You don't get to quote Malcolm X and then show that you have this lack of understanding of how black women have to navigate this world. It really was infuri infuriating to me to see it. And it was also frustrating to watch it as a black woman. But it wasn't 
just Rachel Lindsay. Daniel Acho decided to give this critique, and if he was really truly trying to help her, he would have called her up and said, listen, this is what this looks like. He would not have went on a show to say that he's giving a gender neutral, race neutral take and make it about her. I think, unfortunately, and I'll just, I'll say the ugly thing out loud, when a black woman with power really expresses herself in her full power, it makes people uncomfortable. And that is what she did. At 20 years old, she said, I am me, see me, I am all of me, good, bad, ugly, indifferent, and it made everyone uncomfortable. And so she decided, guess what, I'm gonna own it. Former ESPNer Carrie Champion weighed in as well. So what did Acho say? Let's revisit. Angel Reese, you can't be the big bad wolf, but then kind of cry like courage, the cowardly dog. Because if you wanted to act grown, which she has, if you wanted to get paid like you're grown, which she has, if you wanted to talk to grown folks like you've grown, which you told the coach from an opposing team, watch your mouth. If you want to tell people, get your money up in post game. When you take an L, you just got to take it on the chin. Nobody mourns when the villain catches an L. And Angel Reese, you have self-proclaimed to be the villain. Shout out to you because you're the second best basketball player on the court and it was not close. Outside of Caitlin Clark, it was you. Absolute dog. But you can't, under any circumstance, go to the podium and now try to ask for individuals to give you sympathy. Nobody has sympathy for the villain. You painted the bullseye on your back. Why are you surprised when people shoot at you? So if you want to act grown, if you want to pose grown, if you want to talk grown, if you want to talk to grown folks grown, then you got to take the L like you've grown. Because what frustrated me is you want to be the villain, but you want to hope for sympathy like a hero. Acho co-host Joy Taylor would rightfully push back on this. Who made her the villain? Because someone made her the villain and it wasn't her. She was being herself and bragging the way all athletes brag. But we don't talk about them the way we talk about Angel Reese. But of course, take a wild guess who would have Emmanuel Acho's back. That would be none other than Jason Whitlock. The shell of a man implied it was not Acho's undoing. No, no, no. It's a witch hunt. Noah A. McGee would write, criticizing the way she carries herself is a different issue. Reese has been the same person in every setting, a beautiful, outgoing black woman who believes in herself more than anyone else. After seeing Acho's response on Twitter with his blanket style receipts, which by the way, Rachel Lindsay called the I have a black friend messaging, McGee would add, yeah, not good enough. This makes what you said about Reese even more preposterous. If you've previously spoken out about racial and gender bias, then why ignore it now? Your assessment of the situation with Reese was poor, and instead of owning up to it, you simply said, well, I've done it before. Anti-racism educator and equity advisor Denise Branch told Forbes, what's problematic is he ignored Angel's statements on death threats, AI-generated porn, and her emotional well-being in his self-styled analysis. No amount of unsportsmanlike conduct justifies prompting a response of comparing a black woman to a dog, dehumanizing her, and showing your audience her psychological and physical well-being does not matter. Society's disrespect to black women allows even black men not to hear our pain and neglect respecting and protecting us while joining in as another hand of oppression towards us. There is ample evidence that much of America misses the mark when it comes to the respect and well-being of black women, she would say. He only goes viral when he's attacking black people. Come on. Come on. Sounds familiar. I've said it before and I'll say it again. This is a great example of the ills when it comes to this entire industry. Because Emmanuel Acho is someone who I, I've said this as well. He wants to come off as the sympathetic, understanding, deep thinking philosopher, the know all kind of guy. But the problem with that is when you continue to do this, and as he has said, farm views for brand deals, this is what you're going to get. In addition, what you will get are some defenders. And if you want Jason Whitlock to be your defender, then I really don't know what to tell you. If there are any stories we missed, if there are any that you, the viewer, would like to submit, get at me and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, DMs are open, support the channel. All of our content is free. It's the least you could do. Become a paid channel member and or go to tyt.com slash join to support the network as a whole. Thank you so much. Have a great day.